Greetings, it's me again, TrainerLux. I'll be taking you today on electric fence installation. Here we are installing a ground fence and I'll be taking you through step by step of all things you need to install an electric fence, the materials and the processes that we undertake to install a fence like this. This one can still act as your wall top fence, but in this case, for the uh, case of practical, we're just doing it on temporary fence. We're going to dismantle. Let's start away with materials. So the first material is the strainer insulators. This one we use them at the end of the of the poles or post or at the what we call the corner post. And with this one is what we call inline insulators. The one now they spread the the electric fence wire from the fence post. These are grounding rods with clamps. The one that will give us now the grounding system that we need. This is our square tube, a GI square tube, which is perforated so that it can fit all the insulators, the inline insulators in place. So the inline insulators in this case are going to be mounted on these square tubes using uh, rivets. I will be showing you how to use a rivet machine and how it's done. You can see. So the rivet fits in the insulator and then the insulator fits in the uh, square tube and that's it. Then thereafter we need also a fence wire as you see this one is stainless steel and it's uh, 1.5 millimeter. There's a very strong fence wire. This is an energizer and this is an energizer when we have opened it. The key is to uh, switch it on and off. You can see the three terminals here. So the line uh, in and then we have the ground and then we have the line out. Then we have the battery. So this is a hammer. A hammer energizer there are different types of energizer but this energizer can give a range of uh, 10 kilovolt up to 10 kilovolt to your fence and also can work well for at least a span of uh, two kilometers of uh, fence wire we understand that the fence is, is usually installed in strands and this strands going around the perimeter so that's how it is so our step starts by marking out the location where we're going to place our post and this is what you are seeing. We have identified the location. So for this case, it's just a practical in a college. And uh, I'll be taking you using this practical through the steps. So the marking out is taking place. After we have done that, we will ensure that we mark the end posts. Eh? The end post. So that it can give us the line of the inline post. So here, this is our end post. There's another one on the other end. So we are going to, to install it. Like I said, we are doing it temporary. We are not doing it with concrete. So we are just pushing through the ground and compacting it to make at least it strong to hold the insulators and uh, the wire in place. So this compaction taking place and also we are taking level using spirit level and all that. So this we are also uh, marking the, the location for the inline post. This post are the one that we are going to mount now the uh, insulators on top which will hold the wire. But for the end end post we are not using insulators because we are going to use the strainers with time we are going to show you how it's done so once you have identified all the posts that we need this is how it is now we are going to take the post and we are going to mount it with the, insul uh, the insulators as it is this is a bobbin insulator so you see the process we are mounting the rivet on the riveting gun and then we are going to do the riveting of the insulator on the square tube Remember, this is a GI uh, square tube, a very good square tube if you're looking to install. It's rust free and it has less, uh, uh, what I say, has uh, less, uh, has high tolerance on uh, corrosion. So that's what we're doing. So the riveting gun, pushing and pulling, and then it releases. And that's how it's mounting. We are going to do it for all the square tubes. And in this case, we need six strands. So it means on each post, we are going to have six insulators. So we must do that to achieve. So this one is just for easy demonstration so that you can see the step. You see how it's done. So we're going to do it quickly for all the, uh, the uh, square square tube posts that we're going to use. And you can see the process taking fast with the aid of my trainees. And uh, that's what it is. So they're doing it easily. So also if you have this riveting gun, you have all these things, you can try this at home. So this one is done. Six uh, insulators on, on all the square tubes that we need. And then now it's time to affix the square tube in line and that's what you're doing using a string we are going to get the line straight and make sure that all the insulators align with each other and also all the posts align with each other so that we don't get uh, so that we can have a level uh, line this now we are doing the running of uh, electric fence wire after you run all the uh, fence wire 
one side which is the end yeah? remember our end post is supposed to be reinforced with a stay but for this case like i've said we are we're we are doing it temporarily so this end is what we are, we are using strainer so it means that the strainer is fully locked yeah? the other side is locked on the post and the other side now is one that is holding the wire that is running through the insulators in line the same thing we do on the other side this corner now we have a, a corner emanating with the two ends so we have two strains strainers as you can see the other one for the other end and the other one for the other end that's what we're doing then thereafter we are going to install uh, our loops to ensure that we have a continuous line eh? so in this case out of the six i've decided that i will have four lives and uh, two ground wire so the topmost and the two middle uh, will be live and the last one will be live but the, the 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 second and the fifth conductor will be ground that's what you're doing so we are connecting as you can see i'm using now insulated uh, electric fence wire the one you're seeing in black that is not a uh, neutral wire is an insulated electric fence wire that we are using it to to loop uh, the line to make it continuous so all the four live wires are going to be looped as you can see so the the two middle one locks one with the end one at the bottom and the one at the top and then the the, the second from the top and the fifth from the bottom will be the ground that's what you're going to do so we install that to, to ensure that we have that line so you have two ground wires and the four live wires this one you can discuss with the client then on the other end where we had a corner so what you're doing you're just looping you're making sure that the line is continuous so from the other side of the conductor you just look to the other side of stra uh, strainer to make it continuous but remember the insulation this all this we are doing to avoid uh, shorting or uh, you also avoid shock on the poles and that's it is so when you do it the best way it means that even when you energize the fence your fence uh, will not be shorted and uh, if anyone come in contact with the poles, pole uh, there's nothing that will happen so we are terminating the energizer like i've said that we just need, we just need to use the two terminals that the ground wire output and the live wire output that's what you're seeing the red one is the live and the black one is the ground and we are using the ground wire as you can see the one with the green and yellow and the red one for the live the other side the, the, the live one is supposed to go to the battery terminal so in this case we're not looping it because we're just doing it for the test in the meantime and when you connect to the battery terminal it means even when the power goes off still your fence is live remember this one can give up to ten thousand volts that's a very strong voltage for you to play about in fact i tried using a normal multimeter and it was shorted immediately yeah? so we just need a, a volt a, a voltage tester um, or electric fence tester which we don't have in this case so i'll not be taking you through that test but you can see so we are energizing our our fence from a socket inside and then in this case you'll see i'm now switching it off for now you can see the alarm and fence uh, and yeah, the then when i switch it on then you also the beeping of the fence uh, power uh, on, the, machine here, sir. on the panel you can see now it means that the fence is receiving I voltage that's 10,000 volts so look at the alignment from the energizer to the fence one filling the fence on the live and all the lives are looped together and then the ground one you can see all the ground poles three of them looped together and also have another extra uh, uh, ground rods in this case uh, for uh, for extra uh, grounding that is it so i've done that for intervals at least supposed to be the three ground wires uh, ground roads are supposed to be at interval of 10 feet each in this case i've just used four feet but you, you the, the the ground uh, the ports can be at least a range of eight feet to each other so you'll see on the other end i have a grounding rod that's just connected to the ground wire directly like in this post you see just directly so that one is made to ensure that the proper grounding to eliminate noise thank you for your time